Hello and welcome to the TeamSpeak 3 Windows Server Tutorial. In this tutorial you will learn how to download, install, and configure the TeamSpeak 3 server for Windows. Remember that you can use the pause and rewind buttons on this video player to keep pace with the tutorial as you work with the software. Okay, let's get started. So the first step is to visit the TeamSpeak website at www.teamspeak.com uh, to download the software. So I'm going to open up my browser. As you can see here, I've already navigated to the website. Um, in order to download the software, I simply visit the Downloads menu over here at the right, and I click on the TeamSpeak 3 option. And that will open up a page that displays all of the software that I can download. Um, as you can see here, there are both 32-bit and 64-bit versions of the software. Now, for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to assume that you've already downloaded software from the internet before, and you know how that works, so we're going to minimize this. As you can see on our desktop, uh, we have the TeamSpeak 3 server for Windows 64 archive. Now, it's important to understand that the Windows 64 and the Windows 32 server for TeamSpeak is not like traditional software you would install on a Windows computer. Uh, in fact, there's nothing to install. It is a self-contained, self-operating executable that you run whenever you want, and it will stay operating on your computer until, uh, for example, your computer reboots for maintenance or, uh, or you manually stop it. So I'm going to open up this archive. As you can see now, there's the TeamSpeak 3 server Windows 64 files in there. I'm going to drag that to my desktop. And when that's done decompressing, I will have a folder on my desktop which will contain all of the server files. So here's the folder, and I'm going to open that folder up. And as you can see now, all of the server files are contained in that folder. Now, the important file for, uh, for the sake of this tutorial and for your server is really this executable. It's ts 3 server underscore win64. Uh, when I double-click on that, it's going to start the TeamSpeak server. Again, nothing to install. So let's give that a double-click, and we'll get the obligatory security warning. And we'll click Run. Now, you're going to see some files and some folders appear as the server runs. Um, what's important is you see down here in the taskbar, uh, the TeamSpeak 3 server is actually running now. So this first window that appears has two uh, sort of important buckets of information. Uh, the first is your server query admin username and password. Uh, server query is a really powerful programmatic way to interface with the TeamSpeak 3 server. Uh, we're not going to cover that in this tutorial, but we are going to copy this information as this is the only time this will be displayed. So I'm going to click the Copy button, and I'm going to open up a Notepad file, and I'm going to paste that in, and I'll go back and grab uh, the password and paste that in. Now I'm going to return back to the server, and the second bit of information is critical. So the server admin token is going to allow you to administrate uh, the TeamSpeak 3 server from the TeamSpeak 3 client. Um, now we've had some requests from users to be able to administrate their TeamSpeak 3 server through a web-based console, um, and although we think that's great, it, you really don't need it. Right? The TeamSpeak 3 client will provide you complete access, or will provide anybody complete access with the right permissions to manage all of the configurations and settings of the TeamSpeak 3 server. Uh, but if you do really want a web-based uh, console or, or admin panel, you can visit add-ons, that's A-D-D-O-N-S dot TeamSpeak dot com uh, to download you know, a third-party uh, plugin for TeamSpeak server that will allow you to administrate it you know, over the web. Um, but let's copy this server admin token because, again, we're going to need that very shortly. Paste it into our notepad file. And now we're going to return to the server and click the close button. So at this point, the server is completely operational and it is running. Um, what we need to do is we need to open up the TeamSpeak 3 client. And this tutorial is going to assume that you've already downloaded that client and installed it on the same computer as the server. So here we have our TeamSpeak 3 client. I'm going to double click on that, which will open up the interface. And in order to get started configuring the server, I need uh, to click on Connections and Connect. As you can see here, we've got a local host as our server address. Um, now, TeamSpeak 3 server comes default with a port uh, number of 9987. Uh, it's not important that you type it here, but um, if you do change the port number at some point, your users will have to type the server address and the port number. 
Um, the second piece I'll specify is a nickname, so I'll call myself, how about alpha? And then I don't need a server password yet because we have not configured one on this server. Uh, I'll click the connect button. And as you can hear, there was an audible notification I've connected. And as you can see, the first window that appears is the privilege key uh, that I saw in that initial window when I first started TeamSpeak 3 server. So I'm going to come down to the notepad here, and I'm going to get that key that I pasted. So we'll copy that. We'll come back to TeamSpeak 3 server, and we'll paste that in. And when I hit OK, you'll notice here that my name is visible but there's nothing to the right. I'm just a guest. But when I click this OK button, as you'll see, it was successfully used. Um, and now that I've got a super admin badge uh, right next to my name. So what that enables me to do is that enables me to make any modifications to the server that I want to by right clicking on the server name and choosing Edit Virtual Server. So what appears now is, is managing the virtual server window. You can see lots of information here that you can specify. Um, I'm just going to go through a few of these, so I'm going to change the name to uh, My Guild TeamSpeak Server. Oops. And I'm going to give it a password of 1234. Now, mind you, that's not a very secure password, and we highly recommend that you adhere to best practices with respect to setting server passwords. Um, I'm also going to change the welcome message. So we're going to say, Welcome to My Guild TeamSpeak Server. And then one more thing that I want to show on this panel uh, regarding you know, some, some of the server settings is down here for the host button. So this is a really cool feature, uh, and what it will do is it will actually put an icon over here in the client interface. So whenever anybody logs in, this icon will appear, and it will allow you to specify a website that they could uh, navigate to. So for example, um, when they mouse over the icon that I'm going to, uh, that I'm going to put there, it would say, uh, visit my guild website, and my URL, uh, as you can see here, is www.myguild.org. And then if I had an icon URL, I could also change the look and feel of the icon itself. Um, now I'm going to click Apply, and the first thing that it's going to prompt me for is my password, right? Because I've specified a password up here. So that's one, two, three, four. I'm going to click OK. You can get an audible notification then that I've edited the server. When I click OK again, that will close the panel, but it will also show up here as you can see now that this button is there, and when I mouse over it, it says visit my guild website. If I were to click on that, that would navigate, open up a browser window, and actually navigate to the URL that I provided. So from the perspective of managing your server, you can see that there's lots of things you can do here as a server admin. One of the last things that we want to cover regarding so managing your server is really about enabling other users uh, with privilege keys. So I'm going to come up here to permissions and I'm going to go down to privilege keys. And as you can see here, there's, there's, it's blank right now because it's a new server and we don't have any other users on here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new user privilege key and I can choose a type. I'm going to set them as a server group. So obviously I can I can make um, users, you know, you know, admins of just channels. Uh, I can make them admins of entire servers. So I'm going to choose that, and I'm going to choose a server admin. And I'm going to say, this is for my guild co-master John. And I'm going to click the Create button. So this is important. This privilege key here can only be used one time. And what you'll do is you'll copy it, right? Again, using that Copy to Clipboard button. I'm going to close this. Uh, you can see now that he's in the group server admin. It's for the server, not for a channel. Here's his privilege key. I'm going to close that. And what I would do is I would actually email that key to John. And John would log into TeamSpeak, right? So he could get, um, he could log in with you to obviously need the WAN IP address of your server. And you can get that um, from various websites, uh, such as uh, getmywanip.com. Um, and, you know, you can just Google um, sort of how to find your WAN IP address. You would email him the WAN IP address, um, the port number if you've changed it. You would also email him uh, the server password. And then, of course, you would email him his privilege key. And when he logged in, he would see just what we did before. There would be his name, and he would have nothing here off to the right. And he would come up to permissions, and he would use a privilege key. He would paste that in, and that would afford him the permissions that you've specified. In this case, it would be a server admin. 
So in closing out this tutorial, uh, the last thing that we wanted to mention is you might need to make some router or firewall based changes to your server in order to support TeamSpeak clients connecting. Um, this may not be necessary, your, your router may support these uh, right out of the box, but if you do have to make changes, one of the changes we recommend is um, enabling UDP port 9987. Again, that's the default port for the TeamSpeak 3 server, and that will enable clients to connect. And the other change that you can make is opening TCP port 30033, which will enable file transfers between clients um, who are connected to the server. Again, we thank you for taking the time to watch this tutorial, and we hope we've provided you enough information to get your TeamSpeak 3 server up and running and uh, start hosting all your chat events.